Welcome to Percussion Methods. Today we're talking about tam-tam, sometimes called large gong. The naming for this instrument is a little bit tricky. Tam-tams are usually associated with these large, metallic, unpitched cymbals, where gongs is usually a term for a smaller, pitched cymbal. However, a lot of composers are going to call this instrument large gong instead of tam-tam, just so you're aware. For a single note, I'm gonna stand alongside the tam-tam much like I would with bass drum, so I can use sideways German grip. I have a nice, large, heavy, but soft tam-tam mallet specifically designed for this instrument. I like to play about halfway between the edge and the center, but you can experiment with different playing zones that might give you a more washy, direct, dark or bright sound. Most of the time, I play right about here, with the hinging wrist, accelerating gently into the instrument, then I'm gonna lift out of it, that way the visual matches what we're hearing. Looks and sounds like this. For a softer note, the technique is the same, you're just gonna lower your height. For a louder note, a greater height above the... For a louder note, you use a greater height, and that gives you more velocity into the cymbal. If you're playing a tam-tam roll, switch to some slightly lighter, smaller, but identical mallets. There are multiple schools of thought on how best to execute a tam-tam roll. I like to actually put my arm over the cymbal and I'm gonna be rolling with the mallets across from one another just on opposite sides. This is usually not our approach with a large instrument like bass drum because both the heads can be pitched differently or they might be different materials or different models of heads, but it's just a uniform piece of metal so it works actually quite nicely. This also allows you to put the cymbal against your leg and mute it or dampen it after you're done rolling. I'm gonna roll only as quickly as it takes to generate a sustained sound. If you roll really, really fast, it can make the tone sound tense. If you roll really low, you might hear the individual strokes. Whether I'm rolling or just playing a single note, I'm gonna mute the instrument the same way. Standing alongside it, I'm gonna take my back hand and pull it into the side of my hip. That gives me a little greater surface area to dampen the sound more quickly. Looks kinda of like this. If you're gonna dampen the tam-tam that way, make sure there aren't a bunch of keys in your pockets or rivets on your pants that are gonna rattle as you dampen the cymbal. You can also employ some alternative implements, something like soft marimba mallets, or in this case, these are actually suspended cymbal mallets, can give you a little bit more of an articulate sound, though it will be thinner. Or for even greater articulation, you can use something like this weighted, very soft, unwrapped rubber mallet. Sometimes music will call to use a stick on the tam-tam. I like using a large drum set sticks, but not your nice concert snare sticks. Another popular effect you'll encounter, especially in more contemporary music, is scraping the tam-tam with a coin or some kind of other metallic object. This is made out of solid bronze. It's very, very thick. You're not gonna damage it, so you can really lay into it. Personally, I like to use a large triangle beater like this one and go along the outside edge. It gives you a really, really vibrant sound. So here's with a triangle beater on the outside edge. You can also scrape in different places though too. Or you can use a thinner part of the beater. And of course you can keep experimenting with different colors. A nickel is gonna sound different than a dime, sounds different than a triangle beater, sounds different than your house key, sounds different than one of the bars that came off of your wind chimes. So you can really experiment to your heart's content and dial in the sound.
When selecting a tam tam, go for something like this instrument. It's 36 inches in diameter, and often it's going to be called a chow, C H A U, a chow gong by a percussion vendor. It's going to have these points pre drilled in it. You're going to suspend it on a rolling stand, and a rolling stand is really, really helpful for moving this large, heavy instrument around. Suspend the tam tam through these holes that have been pre drilled using multiple loops of a nice, strong cord like paracord. Those multiple loops give you redundancy just in case one breaks, the instrument won't fall to the ground. You're going to want to check this cord frequently for any kind of fraying or excessive wear and replace it as soon as possible if you notice any of that so it doesn't fall off the stand. Make sure you select a stand that can accommodate your size of Tam Tam. 36 inches is a pretty common size for a Tam Tam, but you can certainly go a little smaller than that. If you go larger than that, they start to get quite big, but it does give you a pretty cool dark sound. Sometimes contemporary music will call for a special effect where you bow the tam-tam. It's possible to do this, but it's pretty difficult and it is rough on your bow. I usually can't get it to work if I'm being totally honest. So I recommend cheating. Mount a china symbol and bow that instead. It's much thinner, it's smaller, and it'll project really, really nicely and give you a nearly identical effect. Another technique you might see on the Tam Tam is using a super ball mallet. Super ball mallets can get the instrument to hum and resonate in an interesting way, but if you really can't get that particular technique to work on your Tam Tam, you could bow a china cymbal instead. As usual, it's best to store your mallets and other instruments on a soft top trap table or a music stand with a black towel on it. This is a nice solution because you have ample room for everything and it won't make any extraneous noise as you pick up and set down those items.